Hello and welcome to Your Money and Real Estate, the inaugural show. I'm really excited. My name is Mark Vasilius. I'll be your host for the next few, few shows, I guess. And uh, my first guest is a really good looking Andrew Hines from ProFunds Mortgages. Now, Andrew, I gotta, I gotta start off. You're a darn look, good looking guy. What are you doing in the mortgage business? You should be a model. You should be maybe on TV, making, probably making more money. I don't know. Is that, is that the case? Well, I appreciate the kind words, Mark. Um, actually, I got into the business uh, purely because I'm interested in uh, mortgage, uh, mortgage and, and real estate investing. Okay. And how did you, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a bit of a, of a story behind that. How did that sort of evolve? I mean, I'm sure I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the first guy that said, hey, man, you should be a model. Not at all. Actually, uh, you know, thanks for asking. It's, uh, it's kind of a different story from, uh, from where I started. Okay. Um, I originally came from a business background. I remember the early days of university walking by and seeing, uh, seeing students renting out houses for $500 a room. Right. And uh, landlords were liter literally making you know, $2,000 a month. And but you can't be over 20 years old. How can you be talking to me as if you're, uh, as if you're an experienced uh, uh, investor already? So you're too nice, Mark. Yeah, well, I'm supposed uh, to be. I'm the host. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, well, I, you know, I, I, I saw that in my early days of university, okay. and it, it really stuck with me. But uh, I was on the track of going to, to business school, so I went to the uh, the Ivy Business School at uh, the University of Western Ontario. Good for you. And uh, got my business degree there, thinking, what was I going to do? Uh, I actually ended up teaching business uh, for Ivy after graduating. And, and what, did you, what did you specialize in? Uh, I specialized in uh, marketing, but uh, I taught general business strategy along with finance, marketing, and operations. Okay. And also uh, wrote business cases in strategy and operations. Good for you. So uh, coming out of that, it was a, it was a real uh, interesting decision for me. So I... I was sitting there and I had this degree that you know most of the people I was going to school with were... Is it, it's, sorry, is it an MBA? Uh, it's an HBA, so it's okay. the honors version of, okay. of the MBA. And uh, I saw most of the people I graduated with becoming consultants and accountants and uh, marketing specialists, which, you know, those were interesting sounding things. I just couldn't quite feel myself in those positions. Right. So what I ended up doing was uh, starting into the mortgage business through a mutual contact I had. Um, because they were focused on real estate investing, and that's how I got involved with ProFunds. It's a brokerage that for 15 years has just been focusing on servicing investors and, and making sure that they get a great return, but also servicing investors that want to use other people's money to make more money and grow their portfolio. So, so when you started looking at the mortgage industry, you're, you're kind of already drilling down to a very specialized focus. As, as we know, a lot of mortgage brokers, they, they can do residential, they can do, so you're saying, you're saying that you very quickly or very early on in your career found that investing in real estate from, a, from the investment standpoint, from making an, uh, a return on your investment, that interested you? Yeah, making a return on my, my investment was the reason I got in. And a lot of mortgage brokers, yes, they go into the business because they want to provide a service, which you know I absolutely do enjoy, and we at ProFunds do enjoy um, doing residential mortgages and helping people that way. And a lot of the investor clients we work with, we do their residential mortgages as well. Oh. But what we're doing uh, for many of them is is placing their funds so that they can earn you know, substantial returns on their money when their mutual funds and RSPs are failing. And uh, we're also giving some of them the opportunity to build new properties, uh, to buy a, you know, new properties when they don't have enough of a down payment uh, in cash, they can borrow against other properties that they own and ultimately end up owning more real estate. Wow, so you're getting, you're getting right into all the strategies that I kind of wanted to be talking about, which is fine. But I, 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 I wanted to mention, um, because I know a lot of people out there can relate to, you know, sort of starting off with, well, I, you know, I don't have any money, or I, like in your situation, fresh out of school, uh, starting out, how did you, um, you know, did you, how, how did you acquire your first property? Uh, so my first property um, I bought with the intention of living in, and then situations was it, was it, changed. Sorry, was it was it in London? Did you actually get involved? Yes. As uh, when you were going to school, you you bought your own investment property and rented out yes. to other students. Uh, actually, it was it was it was after I, I graduated school. It was right about the time I got into this business. Um, I had started, and I was I was actually living in London at the time, and I bought a place to live in. Uh, but what I ended up deciding to do was uh, coming up to the the Greater Toronto area okay. to do business here. So I rented that one out, and. Um, Obviously, the, the, the real benefit was I was able to buy that with a smaller down payment because it was an owner-occupied property. Good for you. Um, typically, investors now are required by 
uh, by uh, the government of Canada to put down a 20% down payment if they want to buy an right. investment property. So, right. so that's what makes it challenging. And obviously, you know, I ask the majority of people you know, do I have, you know, forty thousand dollars sitting in my account waiting for the next down payment on a on a two hundred thousand dollar home uh, not that many people have that sitting in cash so for me it was about finding a better way and um, you know I, I've certainly embraced the philosophy of, of you know saving up the money and and uh, buying a property and the second one I bought was exactly that I saved up the money but um, you know the third and, and fourth properties that I bought I you know I took out a, a line of credit and basically used borrowed money to pay the down payments for now, those. I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it's, it, you're, 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 I bet you there's a lot of people out there <laughs> that would love to ask you a bunch of questions because you're, 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 you're touching on a lot of topics. You're, you're, uh, hopefully people can relate to what you're talking about. So you can certainly, this is a call-in show. Um, you, people can call in right now, ask Andrew any questions and, about mortgages, about investing, about their RSPs. Um, if there's any girls out there, I'm sure you know you can you can do that. I, I I mean that jokingly, of course. But getting getting back now to 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 some of this, Andrew. Um, so so you, you were you buying investment properties before you you started working within the mortgage industry, or? Uh, no, I didn't. And you know the the biggest challenge I had when I got out is just not knowing what the next step was, not knowing how. And I'll use this word, I guess, lightly. Um, did you have a mentor? Did someone? Did you? You know? Did you read books? You know, people talk yeah. about rich dad, poor dad. They talk about Rain, the Real yeah. Estate Investment Network. Did you? Did you read all those books? Or uh, you know, I, I read both of those. Uh, you know, a great mentor that I've had is uh, Carmen Campanero. She uh, she's the president at Pro Funds, and she has been investing you know, almost since she was in diapers. Uh, she started <laughs> when she was uh, she started when she was eighteen, and. Uh, she just has this charisma about her and she has an ability to find a great deal and, and make it happen and um, she really inspired me with a lot of the things that she was doing and that's that's what made the decision easy to move forward with this and, and come work for this broker just because I could really embrace uh, that enthusiasm right and uh, she was a great mentor in that regard and you know certainly I, I'm reading a all nonfiction. I, my girlfriend uh, <laughs> always uh, razzes me that I, I don't read fiction, and I, you know, I'm every every night reading a real estate investment book or a, you. you know a wealth creation book. But that to me is um, is something that's absolutely essential in today's uh, today's environment for people who want to you know build a life for themselves, and they don't want to work every day, you know, to the day that they retire. Um, you know, I, I have aspirations of retiring much earlier. Wow, you know, I, I didn't figure all that out until I was 45 years old, and I'm only 46. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you start you're starting off you're starting certainly off um, young enough, and, and and obviously by the time you're in your 40s, you're going to hopefully have a have a good portfolio. But I, I guess, uh, you know, bringing it back a bit, you know, there's a lot of people out there with mortgages, holding mortgages, and you are in the mortgage business. Let's talk a little bit more okay. about um, you know the more general basic things of if I wanted to buy, uh, start off like I wanted to buy an investment property. Um, and I only have limited resources. I may not even own a home. If I got ten thousand dollars, could I look at uh, investing in a property? Like, could you? Like, this, this, it sounds like Pro Funds is a very specialized mm -hmm. company. Like, uh, if if I have limited funds, could I, you know, go to a company such as yours and you know top up, or how, how would that work? Well, you know, it's a great question, Mark. Um, I think the the biggest thing when somebody wants to get started is is to start looking for that mentor. I mean. You're, you're saying the first investment property a person's going to buy, if they don't own a, a home already, they're going to have a bit of a challenge because, as you know, and we've mm -hmm. discussed, they need 20% of the purchase price down. Uh, now, there are other options. So, for one, um, you could choose to live in the house first. Um, you know, start off that way. If you're a handyman, you can buy your first home with 5% down, fix it up, and then you can move on to the next one and repeat the process. So, so just again, just to clarify that if you own the home, it's only 5% down. If you want to buy it strictly as an investment, it's a different down? It's a different down payment. Exactly okay. right, Mark. So uh, if you have the intention of living in a home and you move into it, um, there's absolutely no problem with that. Uh, CMHC uh, is a is a corporation in in Canada. It's a government backed corporation that insures mortgages. Okay. And what they do for you know financial institutions like TD Canada Trust and RBC is they insure their mortgages. So, essentially, what that allows the borrower to do is put down less down payment. Um, so that's you know that's the bottom line there. So, um, 
yes, there is a price to doing that, but certainly in a you know in a market where it's so difficult to save a down payment, right. that's a, an extreme advantage to somebody to you know to get into their their first home, and that's exactly what the government of Canada wants to encourage. They want to encourage home ownership. They want people to be able to buy their own homes. So that's absolutely something to take advantage of. So when you mentioned a 20% down for, for the investor, mm -hmm. um, if they go below that, are they still able to, to, to buy an investment home? Or are you basically recommending mm -hmm. not to do that only because things like equity, you know, because uh, there are books out there, as you know, that's, yes. you know, no money down miracles, right. uh, all these fancy schmancy things going absolutely. on. So, so would you recommend those kind of investments? Well, or Mark, it, it, what's takes your opinion? A, it takes a strategy. Okay. Um, you know, our, our recommendation is always to remain above board and there are people out there who might do things that um, maybe would be considered unethical or, or maybe not proper way of doing it. Um, sort what of I like would, what happened in the United States. The whole freaking thing went south. Yeah, I mean, and that's all by people kind of, you know, making little exceptions and doing things, you know, differently and maybe not the way that they should be doing them. So um, what I would recommend is, is that get educated number one because once you get educated you find out about all these unique and secret ways that nobody seems to know right. um, to how to invest and and how to buy that first property and and sometimes it's it's about finding a seller that's really really looking to sell and there are very creative strategies that that can be employed there for one sure. uh, sometimes you can find a seller that doesn't have a mortgage and they're willing to sell you the property and hold back the entire mortgage Wow. And what that means is you can actually get into that property with 0% down. Uh, now, is that something that uh, Joe on the street is going to know how to do and he's never tried it? Um, maybe not. But the key thing is to get out there and, and get around like-minded people, people who are uh, investing in real estate, people who are doing it themselves. Because the more education that a person gives themselves, right. the more opportunities they're going to have. And, uh, that's one of our main focuses at ProFunds is educating people and connecting them to other people who all have the same goals. Excellent. Andrew, I got some great news. We've got a caller on the line. Her name's Jennifer from Newmarket. Okay. Jennifer, if you're there, go ahead. What's your question? Hi there. I'm just um, I'm calling because um, I have some friends who, who have rental properties, and I'm wondering if that's a wise way of investing your money. Uh, that's a... That's that's a good question. It's a bit open ended, but mm -hmm. do you, Jennifer, right now? Do you own? Uh, sorry, your friends. Are they recommending that you do it? Like, are you in a position? Is that what you're asking? Well, I don't know because I don't know what sort of position you have to be in to be able to buy a rental property. So, I mean, how much you know, extra cash flow? How much of a down payment you need? How much of a cushion you need in case there's a problem with the actual house itself? And if you need repairs, that sort of thing. Like, right. So, so Jennifer, much... it sounds like you're a little bit scared, but. You kind of want, a, you know, sort of a, as 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 Andrew was mentioning, maybe a mentor or someone to help you out and sort of figure it out. Andrew, could you, you know, answer that a bit? Um, okay, sure. Jennifer, uh, question for you: Do you own a property already? Well, yeah, I'm the house that I live in. So you own your own home. Yeah. Um, have you considered the op uh, option of taking out uh, money from your existing home to invest further in real estate? Uh, I don't know if I'd want to do that. I don't know if I want to take any equity out of my current house. Okay, so you're you're basically looking for a, for a way of, of investing further without putting your own money into it. Yeah. Okay, so is there a way of doing that? Absolutely, there's a way of doing that. And once again, it's all about getting creative and and really just getting out there and educating yourself. And I know I'll, I'll probably repeat that several times, and I do apologize, uh, but it is really really important. And um, what I would suggest in that case is once you develop yourself into being a person who knows how to spot a good deal and and knows how to make money in real estate you can attract people who don't want to get involved in the process who will gladly give you the money to invest and you can take a piece of the return okay. i think i think you're talking about joint ventures yeah. and jennifer if you want to hold hold the line for a sec we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back on your money and real estate Hello and welcome back to Your Money and Real Estate. We have Jennifer on the line and Jennifer uh, had a, a very interesting question. It was very actually an open-ended question, Andrew, where she was you know, inquiring. She's got people who invest in real estate, but she's saying kind of like, how do I get started? Mm -hmm. We touched a little bit on joint ventures, but yeah. you know, it's almost like, it's almost like I, 
I would think, you know, writing a business plan, doing different different avenues. So why don't you take it, Gen Andrew, maybe lead Jennifer, or, you know, a bit down the... Okay. Um, Jennifer, are you still there? I am. Awesome. Okay, so your question, you know, it's a very good one, and one that many people, I'm sure, have, and I, I get asked this a lot, is, yeah, how do I get started? Um, you know, I don't want to put a lot of money into it, but I want to start buying into rental properties. I think it's a great avenue. Um, we talked a little bit about the idea of joint ventures, and yes, it, it's definitely something that you could do. You could look to find somebody who has some money um, who'd be looking to invest with you or, or really doesn't want to get involved with the process and is willing to take a risk on you, per se, uh, because they believe in your capability of doing it. Um, so once again, like I said, the key is just to, to do some research, get educated on it. There are very creative strategies out there. Um, rent to own um, is one you might have heard of. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail right yeah. now uh, about what that is, but there are ways of getting into a property with nothing down um, and basically finding somebody else to, uh, to buy that property from you and making a return on that. So um, what I recommend if you, you, know, if you just want to get started, should I go out and buy a rental property tomorrow? I wouldn't say that that's the case. I think, I think that the best way to do it is, is to start talking to a few different people, um, visit a forum. We're, we're actually offering a forum next week, the, oh, the ProFunds forum. Uh, and that's a venue where these type of questions can get answered in detail. And it's also a venue where you can learn how you can make money in real estate. And it doesn't necessarily have to be buying a property. It can be uh, investing in other ways into real estate. Okay. Jennifer, I hope that, uh, that uh, answered your question. And, you know, Andrew, we, we, we certainly top touched on a lot of different aspects of buying your first rental property. Um, you mentioned the word joint venture, and I know that a lot of people talk about OPM or other people's money. W can you go into a bit more detail as to how can that realistically be applied to, to someone like Jennifer, for example, who, who may, you know, wants to tread lightly? Would that be something that you would recommend or, or maybe, you know, buy a few more properties? But, what, you know, what would be the strategy for that? Um, with other people's money, it's, it's absolutely... Um and I'm glad you asked about that because that is the most crucial thing. And you know, Robert Kiyosaki, obviously, you know, his mentality is, uh, you know, buying things that create cash. And it's okay to use other people's money. In fact, it's encouraged because if you're only using your own money, Mark, yep. you're going to run out sooner or later. Right. Uh, but other people's money is infinite because I can just keep finding new people and I can keep finding more money. Um, what I would suggest is, is in getting started and, and as you're developing your knowledge base, start with people who know, like, and trust you. Uh, family members would be a first. Um, okay. If you know a family member that has an RSP that's performing poorly and you want to start investing in real estate, you could potentially use that money um, if you offer them a return. So say you offer them 5% because you know you can make 10. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you're, 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 you're touching on something that's kind of exciting me a bit here. Mm -hmm. you're, you're mentioning using an RSPs. Now, there's probably a lot of people out there that have RSPs that are mm -hmm. getting pretty poor returns. How, how would someone like Jennifer or someone out there, anyone who has RSPs, say, hey, I want to buy an investment product? Could they use their RSP? In, 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 or, you know, in Great question, Mark. Yes, they could use their RSP, but to actually buy a property, they would need to take the money out of the RSP first. Okay. So... Uh, obviously, with the tax implications of that, a lot of people don't want to do that, but there actually are other ways of investing in real estate through RSPs, and they don't have to actually take the money out of the RSP. They can leave it in the RSP and actually lend private mortgages, which is something that I assume we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, later on in the show. Now, I, I, I do know, can you discuss a little bit about, because obviously we have first home buyers, we have people who are renting, we have people who have investment property. Um, there is There is a... Uh, is it twenty thousand dollars that you can use your own RSP as a down payment for a home that you own? W w does that include that five percent? Like how 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 does that work? Uh, what you're talking about is uh, an incentive from the the government for first time home buyers that okay. they can actually withdraw their RSP uh, without a tax implication. Okay. Provided that they pay it back over a fifteen year period. So it's like they're giving themselves a loan. Yeah, they're essentially loaning themselves money out of their RSP to buy their first home. Okay. Um, once again, Canada is great for this, very pro home ownership. Uh, government has all kinds of incentives to help people buy their first home. Well, with the cold winters we have, you know, yeah. you want a roof over it. People want to have a roof over that. It, it changes a little bit when it comes to investment properties. Okay. Um, can, you, can, you, can you do the same application, take your RSP out, buy an investment property directly with it? No, you can't do that. So okay. uh, the key thing to RSPs is they have to be arm's length, meaning that you can't lend money to yourself. 
Um, ah. there, there are other uh, tricks within the bank that you can lend uh, money to yourself. Once again, it would be secured. But uh, what I'm talking about is, is um, taking money out of your RSP uh, in a legitimate way to lend it to somebody, uh, but there's no tax implication there. You can actually lend somebody money, make a return, and leave it, on, leave it in your RSP. So if someone, let me just take this a little bit further then. So if someone has, uh, let's we'll use Jennifer for example. Uh, someone goes to Jennifer and says, here, I, I have uh, $40,000 in an RSP. And they give it to Jennifer. She could use it to buy an investment property? Yes, Jennifer could use that money to but buy But the an person lending the money can't own it. Is that, how, is that what arm's length means? Oh, okay, I see, I see how, what your question is. Like, like the relationship there, you know, like, like brothers, sisters, or, you know, like family members, can they all just pool their money together and buy an investment property? That's actually a great question. <laughs> uh, I've never had that exact scenario um, of, of people trying to do that. Um, something I'd have to look into and, and, uh, and get you a more specific <laughs> You mean to tell answer. me I stumped, stumped an me. Ivy League guy? <laughs> Holy crow. Um, all right, well, then, then get, let's get back to, to using the RSP uh, as, yeah. as a, I guess, a, a arm's length, second mortgages, or how, yeah. uh, the process of that. Let me just give you a story, Mark, because that's sure. probably the easiest way of, of describing it. Um, so we work with a lot of investors, and as okay. I mentioned before, these are the type of people who want to grow their, their investment portfolio. Okay. So, you know, John is one of my clients. John has three properties and he wants to buy the fourth, but he doesn't have the cash to do so. Okay. The thing that John does have is he has equity in those three properties. And that equity is something that can be secured. So what John does is he comes to ProFunds and he says, hey, I'd like to borrow some money against my three properties so that I can buy a fourth. We would in turn look to one of our investors who would lend John money secured against those three properties that he currently owns so that he can buy the fourth property. And the, go ahead. No, no, no. It's, so, so I'm just trying to get the, you, would, you have a guy with already assets and he's yes. got equity in these properties. Mm -hmm. You would then find someone else to lend that guy the money, which yeah. basically is secured by his, his three properties. Yeah. On, on, um, and, and that's a second mortgage or is how, yeah, how, how it is could that? be a second mortgage. It could be a third mortgage and that could be RSP money. So our investor might have RSPs sitting there oh. and, uh, you know, say they were in stocks and, you know, for the last 10 years, they've been losing about, uh, you know, one or 2% per year. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, we have another caller. Her okay. name's Trudy from Newmarket. Trudy, can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, I would like to know, I have RRSPs, and can I take those and lend them to myself on a low rate for my mortgage? <laughs> Andrew? Trudy, there is a way to do that. Uh, it has to be secured by real estate. Um, it, it actually can only be done with locked-in funds, so if, if your RSPs are locked in. Um, That's a, li a lira? A lira, yeah, yeah, that would be called a lira. If they're just regular RSPs, you actually can't uh, lend them to yourself. Um, we've done creative strategies where we had two mutually agreed parties that both lent to each other. Um, you know, we had two clients that both had $80,000 in RSPs and wanted access to it, so they uh, made an arrangement to lend it to each other. Right. Uh, that can be done. But no, you can't lend it to yourself directly. But if you had money in those RSPs, what you could do is you could lend it out and, and earn a generous return, um, you know, anywhere between 8 and 14% um, per year. So, so Trudy, I, I guess uh, he's, he's saying that you can't be direct, but does that answer your question at all? Or are you looking... My question, I can't be direct, but I can lend it to somebody else and they can lend it, but my, and I can make money that way and get it back. Absolutely. So there's a way to make money from it, but to take it out directly, uh, the only way to, to do that is to, to pay the tax on it and, and uh, withdraw it from your RSP. Yeah, and we all hate paying tax. So, so Trudy's touching on something that, that I guess is, is probably, you know, everyone wants to say, gosh, I got all this money in RSPs. I'm getting 3% return. I'm getting 1% mm -hmm. return. What kind of returns, if someone were to take, like Trudy, were to take her investment uh, or her RSP and put it into a, give it to another investor and put it on a home, would they get 3% or is it, how does that work? Uh, actually, Mark, you know, another great question. Typically, they're actually going to get much more than 3%, and um, that actually sounds too good to be true to a lot of people, but it's, it's really not. In, in pr the private mortgage market, um, your returns are going to be anywhere between 8 and 14%, and, and on occasion, we even have deals uh, uh, that are more than that. That's fantastic. And, 
you know, think about how many people do you know that, that come to you and, you know, they're standing around in the workroom talking about, wow, my mutual fund is making such great, uh, great returns now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, wow, the stock market is really booming right now. Um, that's a conversation that most people won't often hear. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, Andrew, the phones are ringing off the hook. They're ringing we, off the we hook. Have, which is a good sign. Uh, we have Robbie on the line. Robbie, can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, hi question? there. Well, first of all, let me tell you, I'm really enjoying your show. Um, I have a, a question for Andrew. I'm a little bit like Jennifer. I kind of don't feel that um, I, I'm where she is, but I, I don't know if I got the answer that I was looking for through her question. So I'm in a position when I'm, I'm in a property which I've almost paid for, and I would like to know a little bit more about buying an investment property. However, I just want to point out, I know so many people that live the average life of Joe, you know, whatever, earning $700 a week, but they own five or six properties in the new market area that they rent out. I know there's a way to do this. What I'm looking for is really um, a simple term answer in layman's English that I'll understand, and I don't mean to be condescending when I say that. It's just that sometimes what you use terminologies I'm not used to, and I don't totally understand. But what I'm looking for is an answer is, where do we start? What do we do? Where do we start <laughs> as a single person? And I'm not looking for an investor to come into it with me. Okay. Trudy, that's, that's an excellent question. Andrew, uh, fire away. It's, okay. it's, it's, it, it, Awesome. So, Robbie, I've just got the names mixed is up. It, is it Robbie? Yeah. Uh, Robbie, thanks for the question. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good one. It's, it's a tough one for me to give you a firm, this is what you should do. Uh, it, it really does depend on, on your risk tolerance and what your goals are. Uh, however, what I can tell you is, is that there are some great opportunities for you. Um, the number one thing that you need to do if you are serious about this uh, is you need to get access to some of the equity that you have in that home. So if you've almost paid off that mortgage, uh, we have several clients that are in that boat that actually refinance and they can take out, to, they can take out up to 80% of their home's value and they can invest that. Uh, so just to put it in perspective uh, for, you right, for you right now, um, we actually have access to historically rock bottom rates. I mean, we're within a quarter percent of, of the lowest rates we've, we've ever seen in Canada. And uh, five-year rates at 2.99, um, those, those offers are, are just on their final days right now. But to be able to borrow money at 3% and potentially even lend it out at 12% in a very simple investment, uh, which is a mortgage, um, that's, that's an incredible opportunity, which so many people don't take advantage of. Um, I have to say that I, I've had clients that I've worked with that have gone to coaching sessions through the various different groups uh, that operate here in Toronto, and they just start taking all the equity out of their homes and investing it into mortgages. Uh, and I have a client that's lent out over $300,000 in mortgages that he took out of his home, and he's making over $6,000 a month in cash flow from that. Andrew, we're, uh, we can continue on with Robbie's question. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Your Money and Real Estate. Hello. Welcome back to Your Money and Real Estate. My name is Mark Basilius. I'm with the fabulous, suntanned Andrew Hines. And we were talking about, uh, Robbie had a great question. She, she obviously has some equity in her home and she wants to really move forward. It's like, you know, Jennifer started with a very general question mm -hmm. and then Robbie sort of said, look, you know, I need to be a bit more specific. So, Andrew, yeah. why don't we take that a bit further? Okay, Robbie, so I will pick up on your question. Uh, just so you know, you can take the equity out of your home up to 80%. So it sounds like you've probably got a fair bit available. Um, that's as simple as, you know, give me a call, uh, go to www.profunds.ca and uh, you can find our contact information there and we can actually arrange to uh, have a new mortgage put in place for you so that you can access those funds. Uh, then from there, it's up to you. If you find a property that you would like, absolutely, if, if you're employed and your credit is in place, we can get you a mortgage on a new property. And the process is actually quite simple. What I would urge you to do is, is just please be very careful as you're, you're buying a property and, and don't take that decision lightly. That is, that is something that you know, many landlords out there will tell you, ah, I, you know, I wish I could take back that house that I bought. Yeah. Um, and the key thing to avoid those type of mistakes is once again to get educated. Um, go out and talk to other real estate investors that are doing it right. 
Don't go talk to the people who have sad stories. Talk to people who are making good money and they're happy because if you can find a happy landlord, they probably did something to be that way. Sure. And that's the person that, that you want to be as, as a real estate I mean, investor. we've all heard nightmare stories. Yeah. Oh, I bought a rental property. I rented it to a yeah. bunch of students and all they did was smash you know, wall, walls out and stuff right. like that. So. Yeah, so you absolutely have to be careful. What I would encourage you to do is take the first step. And the first step is just, you know, getting involved in some way. And what I would recommend is, is come out to our seminar next week. It's on uh, Thursday, September the 12th. And uh, it's at 7 p.m. And I believe the... Uh, Howard Johnson on Young Street. Is that where it is? Uh, uh, it's the Howard Johnson. Is Howard it Johnson and in Aurora. That's right. In Aurora. So, you know, that's a great opportunity for you to get these questions answered in more detail and then really get a clearer picture for yourself. Is it, you know, is it really that I want to buy another property or do I want another more passive type of investment? Now, you're, you're, you're certainly touching on something we talked at the very beginning, which is let's move slowly. Let's, let's you know, a person like, like, like Robbie needs a little bit of, uh, I, I don't want to use the word hand-holding, but you know what, move slowly because it is. It's, it's an important investment. Now, I don't mean to, to move on, but again, the phones are ringing. We have, uh, I believe we still have Jordan on the line. Jordan, are you still there? Hi, yes, I am. Go ahead. What's your question? Okay, so I'm just I'm calling because I'm a student. I'm 21 years old, and I'm just wondering if there is an age restriction on investing with RSPs and if there's a minimum amount. Andrew, take it away. Uh, Jordan, that's a good question. Uh, so you asked if there's a minimum restriction on, on how much you can invest? Yes, yeah. and okay. like an age restriction as well. Uh, there's no age restriction. If, if you have RSPs, you can use them. Um, so the number one thing is, yes, there is, there is a bit of a minimum, and that, that's not because it's a hard enforced minimum. Uh, it's just typically we don't get a lot of private mortgage requests for less than $25,000. So usually we'd be starting in the, in the ballpark of twenty to $25,000. If you had that available, uh, then absolutely there would be an opportunity come along that, uh, that may interest you and, and we could put you into as an investment. Now you're touching on something, you know, in terms of an amount, but um, which, which we talked about before the show. We want to sort of address it with some of our viewers. And, and that's a thing called a, a syndicate mortgage where someone like Jordan, she may, I don't know if you're mm -hmm. still there, Jordan, but if you have less than 25, is there, is there another avenue of, of how she could invest in real estate without necessarily, you know, uh, owning a rental property or, or doing a mortgage directly? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what if she only has 5,000? Is that something that she could do? And as um, pro funds do something like that? Typically, we, we don't have um, requests that would, that would pool that small of amount, an amount of funds together. Okay. I mean, I would really like to, to put some emphasis on that it is, you know, 20000 or more. There is the occasional request for less than that. Um, but if you really want to have a good shot at, at, you know, getting your money used in a mortgage, uh, you know, please try and make sure that you have at least that. Um, we can certainly, if, if you have a family member that also has some funds available, you can also talk to them. And, uh, you know, perhaps they want to pitch in 10000 and that's how you come up with the 20000 uh, But, you know, it goes upward from there. We have private mortgage requests from, uh, you know, say $25,000 to 200000 and then, you know, sure. even upward from there. Is it, uh, in terms of the, the minimum amount, is it, is it that obviously no one wants to refinance their home for 5000 but mm -hmm. I, I've, I've heard of, you know, what they call a, a syndicate, where people pool yeah. their money. And is it, is it fees or is it, what makes it prohibitive for such smaller amounts? You really hit on it there, Mark. It's the fees. Ah. Uh, if you think about a real estate transaction is fixed. Uh, our work in the, in the process as mortgage brokers, uh, the, uh, the, the um, lawyers work, um, that doesn't change whether it's a $200,000 mortgage or it's a $5,000 mortgage. And I can tell you that, you know, legal fees are going to probably be, you know, one to $2,000 on, right. on a transaction. So if they're only investing five, um, you know, we also have to get paid in there as well. Sure. Uh, now it is the borrowers that pay us. Uh, the investor never pays us. It's actually deducted from the, the borrower's advance. But if they're borrowing $5,000, essentially they're, they're not really going to get anything after they pay fees. Right. So, you know, for that reason, that's why it tends to start around 25 um, and, you know, certainly goes upward from there. Yeah. So, so um, if, if, again, uh, you, uh, the fees that, that we're discussing, they're, yeah. they're a fixed amount. So it would be obviously more beneficial to throw in more money because that fixed amount is, is right. not going to change. Right. Uh, like a lawyer, a lawyer's fee doesn't charge you more if you've got 200000 Right. And, and once again, keep in mind, the person paying that fee is the borrower. So uh, the borrower is not going to request to borrow a really small amount of money because it's not worthwhile. Okay. But the borrower would request to borrow 50. You know, if, if, if their total fees are 5,000, they still get 45,000 in their pocket to do with what, what they want. 
um, and you know to, to buy that next investment property or to complete the renovations that they're working on on their property right. so that they can add you know significant value to it and sell it and make a profit and ultimately that's what this is all about this is about making a profit in real estate now we we touched on um, using RSPs mm -hmm. and um, I know that there, you know um, on my website I talk a, a lot about that I get the majority of the questions I get are always about using their RSPs mm -hmm. to buy an investment or to invest in an investment property can you walk through a little bit of you know the process of you know a family you know they, they they're saving money they got fifty thousand let's say an RSP they don't necessarily want to deal with the headaches or they're afraid of of, mm -hmm. of, of, of the idea of managing tenants how would how would someone like that say, okay, you know what, I, I'm tired of getting 3%. I want to yeah. go and get 8%, 10%. Yeah. What's the due diligence process? How, how would someone you know, go about the process of doing that? Take it right from the beginning. Okay, yeah, and that's, uh, that's a good place to start. So we'll start at the beginning. Um, you know, the first step, obviously, is, is making that decision that I don't want to invest my money at 3% or 2% or, you know, more realistically, sure. negative 1%. Um, I want to make more. And so the first step would be to realize that. And then to go from there would be to come out to one of our forums, uh, www.profunds.ca. So that's P-R-O-F-U-N-D-S dot C-A. Uh, and then from there, you can learn a little bit about what it is that you'd like to invest in. Maybe you are very conservative and you'd like to only invest in you know, the safest of, of the safe private mortgages. That's fine. We do have offers you know, or requests for that those are typically not going to earn quite as much of a return. Uh, but then we have other people that, you know, they're willing to take a little bit of risk, uh, you know, because they have been in the stock market anyway. Sure. Um, and they're earning anywhere from 8 to 12 percent. So the due diligence that's involved in that process is essentially we get requests all the time for private funds. Uh, what's really important that you know is we do not work with, uh, you know, very poor credit clients. We don't work with people who um, can't you know can't make it to their next paycheck and that's why they need a private mortgage sure. that's not the client base we work with as I said we work with investors and these are people who you know have great jobs great credit uh, and they already own several properties and they just want to grow more uh, because they understand that you know the key to wealth is is to build your portfolio and to build your passive income uh, and that's done through real estate so so um, again someone has fifty thousand yeah. they would go to a seminar or give you a call and, yeah. and, and, and discuss, I guess, removing it out of, if it's sitting, let's say, I don't know, a bank somewhere, yeah. and it's earning a lousy 3%. Yeah. Um, would, you know, how, how quick could something like someone says, you know what, I want to do it. Can, okay. I want to transfer my money right now. How, how quick and what is the sort of the steps involved? Okay, so uh, the first step was, would be to make sure that your RSP is with an institution that can lend arm's length private mortgages. Okay. Um, there are multiple institutions out there that, that do that. And if once did the again, big five, sorry, did the big five offer that kind of stuff? Uh, some of the big five do, okay. not all. Okay. Um, once again, that's another piece of information. Getting into a little bit more detail, please come out to our seminar sure. and, and we can talk about that more. Uh, but once you get to that first step, your funds are in the right institution and they have to be sitting in cash. So essentially, your your investment is is sitting in cash, say um, at TD Waterhouse. Uh, can can a lira can any type of RSP or is it, or is it like when you mention cash it's got to be yeah. available or can a lira can can a um, the, uh, the the TS the for stu for for kids we're learning for their education <laughs> oh the RESP RESP sorry yes yeah they can, any of those can be sitting in, in cash and uh, I want to take back what I said about TD Waterhouse they actually don't do arm's length mortgages okay. but uh, you would make sure that you're with an institution that does. Uh, yeah, and it could be an RESP, it could be a Lira, it could be an RRSP. Uh, once it's sitting in cash, then, then you're ready for the deal. Okay. So what would happen is if you had told me, hey, Andrew, I'm interested in lending a private mortgage, I've got $50,000, please keep an eye out for me. So I'd keep an eye out for you, and then when the right deal came around, I would pre-screen it. And my pre-screen, you know, obviously I look at the credit, I look at their income, um, and I make sure that these people have a track record. If, if they want to borrow this money to do a development or to you know, renovate and flip a house, I'm going to make sure that these are the type of people and, that can do that. And that's a bit of a more of a higher risk type investment. Like, I'm assuming that someone who, who's buying a regular home going to live in it, mm -hmm. that's a safe mortgage. Something as you go down the road, a development, buying a raw piece of land mm -hmm. is a lot more riskier than having a family living in a home. 
Uh, you know, that, that might seem, uh, it might seem counterintuitive, Mark, but actually uh, the people who are buying a house to live in it, you know, they have access to 95% financing. Oh, right. So our investors, they're limited to 80%. So we can lend out investors' money, to, you know, up to 85%, and the investor is still relatively safe in that position. Um, and the person who is borrowing the money is just getting a little bit further ahead and being able to buy that next property. Andrew, you're touching on something really exciting I want to further at. We're going to take a quick break on your money in real estate. We'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to your money in real estate. We're talking about money, 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 because that seems to be what everybody wants to talk about is getting a return, finding out the best option. So Andrew, before the break, we were talking about RSPs and um, you know the type of client and stuff. And I, you know, let's pick up where we left off then. Okay, absolutely. And in marketing, we also talked about process and you know, right. where due diligence and things like that. Yeah, we got caught up in that due diligence process. And and that's something that I really want to urge you. You know, don't just go out and, and find a neighbor who wants to borrow some money and secure it against his house. Um, you know, granted, if you really trust the person, you can do something like that. But that's not something that we at ProFunds would recommend. Uh, due diligence is, you know, a process of, of screening a client and making sure that they are, uh, you know, worthy of your money. And that's the value that we add at ProFunds. We treat your money like it's our money. Right. And, you know, we would never encourage one of our clients to lend on something if we wouldn't do it ourselves. And the only way I would ever have one of my clients lend when I wouldn't do it myself is I would tell them that. You know what? I wouldn't do this, but if you have a specific appetite for that and you understand the risks, then go ahead. Uh, but that typically is for somebody who's a little bit more advanced and, you know, really knows what they want uh, in real estate investors or investing. Uh, now, you, you talked about obviously an investment that you may not do. So we're referring to high risk investments. Right. I'm assuming with high risk investments, there's also the opportunity to, to, to get 12, 14 higher percentage rates. Right. And someone's saying, look, I don't care the risk. You know, I know the property because, as you know, some sophisticated investors, they've already, you know, they've done this. Yeah. This is probably not going to be the first time right. they've done this. So they look at the property, mm -hmm. you know, the valuations are there and they say, I don't care. I'm going to do it. Is that right? Absolutely, Mark. And I had a, you know, a perfect example of that. A client came to me, uh, you know, he had a failed business venture. His credit was beat up. Uh, you know, his, his income was, was not really that great. And I, I told you, we don't typically work with that type of client. But this one came to me and we had one specific uh, investor that's a realtor in the Oakville area. And she knew, uh, she knew the property value there and she was very comfortable with it. And she knew that if it needed to be sold, the money was there. And she said, you know what, I don't care. I know that that property is worth, you know, X amount of dollars and uh, she said go ahead and uh, she did the deal so but typically our process is we will make sure that the client gets an appraisal on the property so that we know what the value is we'll make sure their credits in line um, their story has to check out I'm, I'm a very big person on the story and I have I always get a good feel when I talk to a person um, you know do they have their uh, their head in the right place or have they made some bad decisions and are still making bad decisions uh, we do everything we can to avoid working with people who, who are making bad decisions in real estate. Uh, that being said, there are, there are many making great decisions. Yeah, and, and you know, you're, you're, you're touching on something that, yeah. that you know, I've learned over the years, and that is real estate is about a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think, well, you know what, I, you know, I'm going to own this yeah. home. And, you know, and the idea of a joint venture, to, you know, working yeah. with someone and, or the idea of, of, of uh, you know, creating yeah. relationships with other people, that can be a little bit daunting yeah. for people because they think, look, I've got my own money. Why do I need anybody else? Right. You know, and, and so uh, um, I know that, as you mentioned, eventually you'll run out. It depends yeah. on how big, I guess, your portfolio is. Yeah. But you're, you're, I think you're touching on something to me, which is one of the most important things, which is creating a relationship yeah. with all our clients including right. investors and and the and the borrower and that's absolutely it mark we are creating relationships that's what we're driving for uh, our investors are repeat investors they continually invest their money with us and they continually get returns uh, and we can't guarantee that things are always going to go right but very generally they do in the last five to six years um, you know the default rate on our private mortgages is almost zero uh, I think we had just one in that time frame and there were hundreds that were lent and so, I mean, compare that to the stock market. If you think about it, I mean, how likely is it that you're going to lose money in the stock market versus real estate? If you really did the numbers, 
uh, you're going to see that you're far better off investing in real estate, and real estate's also giving a far better return. And I think too, um, you know, to 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 clarify that when you invest like with pro funds, your money's secured against real property. Yeah. You know, I, I use the word well, you you, you buy a, you buy a stock, uh, you know, you get a piece of paper that says you own something. Yeah. If that company goes under, you've got a piece of paper. Right. If the 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 the, the property defaults, mm -hmm. your money. Is that that property cannot be sold without you getting your, your piece of the pie? Is that you're, correct? You're absolutely right, right so it's Mark. It's bricks and mortar, as they say. It's bricks and mortars. It's something real. I can touch it. I can go out and I can right. hug that building if I want. You know, my and investment's I have. still there. Many, many times I have. <laughs> my investment's still there, right? It's still worth something. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, if the investor, or, or sorry, if the borrower doesn't pay, um, you know, we're in there with you, giving you whatever guidance we can, and, and you know, we're very helpful in that process. We'll, uh, we'll help you as, as much as we can. I mean, it is your investment if you make the decision to do it, but, uh, you know, your chances are you're going to get your money back, and, and obviously the person borrowing the money, they don't want to default. They don't want to lose their home or their property, uh, so they're going to do everything that they can to make sure that, that they pay their mortgage. Now, we, we haven't you know, uh, on that same vein, we mm -hmm. haven't um, discussed, you know, the current state of what's happening in the real estate market. Obviously, you know, in the U.S., big crash of 2008, Canada, thank right. God, you know, we have strong banks. Our mortgage yeah. system is nowhere near as shaky right. as that. There's a lot more stability, but there has been a lot of what mm -hmm. they call froth in the bubble. Yeah. What's your take on that? So if someone were to say, you know what, I want to invest, and, you know, we're talking about, you know, security and this and that, but in terms of the state right. of the market right now, what's, what's your opinion? Uh, you know, I, I think the biggest thing there, Mark, is to, to acknowledge that it really depends on where a person lives and where specifically they're looking. Okay. There are areas that I personally wouldn't invest in. Uh, you know, can I predict, is, is it going to fall? Uh, you know, I, I don't know for sure. But the things that I look for, uh, you know, specifically, I look for an area that's growing, uh, where income, average income in that area is growing faster than uh, property prices. You know, there's an obvious sign because... Uh, that's indicating that people are going to be able to continue to afford the real estate in that area. Sure. So, you know, there are many different avenues that you can go with investing, but when we're talking about mortgages, we're not going to put you into a very high, highly leveraged situation, meaning that there's very little equity in the property. If you lend a second mortgage, uh, typically we never go over 85% of the value of the property. So there's a 15% buffer there in case the value of the property does change. Right. And, you know, keep this in context. So many things would have to go wrong in order for, for you to lose money in a, in a second mortgage lending. And, and I think we need to be realistic that, uh, you know, obviously people who are following, you know, real estate, they understand that Vancouver prices yeah. have been going up. Toronto has mm -hmm. been doing fantastic. The GTA, things are going well. Right. And I think the word you said is, okay, if someone were to value a house at $100,000 and they loan eighty five, they're still $15,000. Right. So for something to drop, Fifteen thousand. I, I mean, we've seen, yeah. we still haven't seen Toronto drop, but we, we right. do. You know, I mean, historically, I am old enough to know yeah. that a drop of ten percent is huge. I Absolutely. mean, we haven't seen a drop of ten percent since, no. I guess, nineteen eighty nine. And you were what in diapers then? I think. Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't seen those kind of drops, Mark. And you're absolutely right. It doesn't mean that it won't happen, uh, but you know, you have to go by uh, by history and in, in in what what we can see in the market and. No one has a crystal ball, but it's about making the best educated decision we can. Uh, we're not just restricted to Toronto. You know, say that's not your cup of tea. Uh, you know, we have people requesting private mortgages across Canada, and we service across Canada. And uh, there are opportunities. If Toronto's not your cup of tea and you really feel strongly about Kitchener-Waterloo, well, we can keep you in mind for deals that come up in Kitchener-Waterloo or in Newmarket. You know, if this is the area that you want to be investing, uh, absolutely, you can do that. You, you mentioned something earlier on about that certain areas are, are, are more prone. Mm -hmm. You know, there's indications. You know, we mentioned, uh, you know, income in different areas. Yeah. I, I think it's important to talk that, you know, real estate is a very local thing. Yeah. And I think for a lot of our viewers, you know, they, they live in certain areas. Right. So they know their area. They know, yeah. you know, what the neighborhood is. And more than likely, investing in a, in a right. local is probably the better move, for, right. especially for someone that is not sophisticated. Right. And, and the other thing to keep in mind is that our average investor is not sophisticated. These are not people that are incredibly knowledgeable on real estate and, and know all the ins and outs. These are people who are working, you know, sometimes blue-collar, blue sometimes white-collar, you know, professional jobs. Uh, and they have money sitting in their RSPs not doing anything, or they have money sitting in cash not doing anything, and they don't know what to do with it. And 
you know, I say come to the forum and learn. Uh, you know, you, you can learn a bit in one night. You're never going to learn it all that night. Uh, that's why our investors rely on us to do the screening for them, to tell them, hey, this is a good investment. Uh, obviously, you're still the person that makes the decision right. as the investor, but we'll do our best to make it as easy on you as possible. We'll give you our honest opinion because, like I said, your money is like our money. Um, you know, granted, we never actually touch that money. It goes straight to the lawyer and straight to the borrower. Um, we treat it like it's our own. And if you know, if anything goes wrong, you can bet that we're going to be in there involved and and uh, you know, doing everything we can to make sure that you get your money back because we want that relationship with you. Andrew, you know we're we're running a little bit short on time. Why are you? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, if we've touched on a lot of topics. We've touched right. on oh my goodness on so many things, and I'm sure a lot of viewers out there would like to further this conversation. As would I. Right. Um, so the uh, the seminar is uh, is next Thursday the twelfth, I think it is. is yeah, it? Thursday the twelfth at the Howard September. Johnson one five five two zero Young Street in Aurora, okay. and I think it's se seven, seven o'clock seven p.m. So for anyone out there that would like to you know meet Andrew. Uh, I'm probably going to be there as well because I love to further our conversation and education. You can certainly show up there. Uh, you can go to their website and sign up there. You can also go to my website, manainvestments.com. And for more information, and Andrew, I would so like to thank you for coming on the show. And I think it was a bit short notice. Um, Andrew, you've been, you've been wonderful. And uh, we'll see you next time on Your Money and Real Estate.